Hi, this is Marty with FLIR Security's TCX Training Department. We're here today to do a quick training video about two new tabs that we've added to Admin Center, and they're both related to cyber defense. So let's go ahead and take a look. Under the physical view up here, if I highlight system, you can see I have four different cameras associated with this system. Uh, and these are the two new tabs that I was referring to, system security and edge security. Now system security, if you recall before 8.0 came out, this used to be a password function tab. And you can see down below here, starting with the user password rules, all of that same functionality is still here as well. Uh, we've just added some things now to the top, including the web security, right? That's a TLS certificate that uh, protects the connection between a transcoder and a web server. Uh, makes it HTTPS basically instead of HTTP. Uh, but what we wanna talk about here primarily today is the edge security settings. Now you can see there are three settings and these settings relate to the cameras, which you can see here under edge security. So you can see that they're not secured and that the default password has not been changed. So both of these two things we can control. Uh, and we control those using some of these three buttons right here. Now, if you see the top button, this one generally is used in conjunction with one of the other two buttons because all this has to do with is when connecting new units, as you can see here. So if I check this box and hit save, it will have no bearing on these cameras whatsoever because they were already in the system. This is just for new cameras. So let's uncheck that one. Now the one here in the middle, it says block communications for devices using unsecured connection. So as you saw, when I went to the edge security, right, these are not secured. So if I were to check that box, I should, whoops, if I were to check that box like so, and then hit save, give it a second or two, we go back and look at the edge security tab. And as you can see, they've all been blocked now. Why? Because they are not secured. So that's pretty easy to understand. But notice uh, the one below that is just slightly different. The one below that says block communication for devices using untrusted certificates. Now, the reason, let's go back to our edge security tag. Uh, the reason that we can secure these is because the way we do it is actually I never saved it again to bring my cameras out of being blocked. Uh, but basically we set a certificate on our cameras and that's what Latitude looks at to make sure that this is a valid device and it's not, you know, a man in the middle attack or something. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, as we mentioned here before, I took those off, but I never hit save. So if I go back now and hit save, now we go back and we can see they are available to be secured. Now, what I have done, uh, notice, I'm not sure what happened here with this camera. Ah, it just went inaccessible. So uh, I just have some network issues with that particular camera. I'm not that concerned about. Let's take a look at this camera right here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna point out how both of these can be solved, which would then uh, be named a secure camera after both of these things are done. Now, so the secure section right here is controlled by the set security mode button. Now, if I click that, you can see I only have two choices. The reason I'm not going to do this right now is because I don't have a camera a certificate set up yet. Actually, I do, but I wanted to show it to you first. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, this is the uh, corner camera that I'm using, the aerial uh, eight to three megapixel camera. But what you can see here in the settings menu, under my network settings, there are two different things that I need to set up here. Uh, in the general tab itself, uh, there is a section down towards the bottom, and you can see I have turned that on. That does need to be turned on. However, you need to do something else first before you turn it on. Otherwise, it'll tell you to go do that other thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. That is down here in the SSL section under network as well. And when you click on that section, there was nothing in here, right? And it said none. Uh, I created a self-signed certificate, as you can see right here, just using my own information that I created myself. Uh, and I think you can see once the certificate is generated, if it's self-signed, I mean, how secure is that really? It's uh, secure for your own purposes, maybe. Uh, but there are secured, excuse me, there are certificates that can be purchased from the quasi-governmental agencies that do that sort of thing. Uh, and again, lots of companies uh, use the SSL connections now just to make sure that uh, both devices, the receiver and the sender of anything on the network, uh, are trusted sources. So you can see I've got my certificate ready. Uh, I did go into the general tab and turn it on. And once I've got that ready then, then of course I can secure this camera. And this is the camera that we were just looking at right here at the bottom. So I am gonna to go to set security mode. And you can see it's as simple as this. It's simply gonna take a look at the camera 
it's in progress, and it sees the valid date for the certificate. So now this says yes, because I've secured it, at least in this column, but I still have this open uh, thing over here that I need to take care of to make it fully secured. And you can see right down here at the bottom, unit still has the default password, and that's our main issue here. So I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm gonna come over here and change password. Now, uh, I'm simply gonna put in my new password, and uh, show out a couple of things we've added here. We have the confirm password field and the show password field. I kind of like this one too because it shows you that you're not fat fingering it and that they are both the same. And then when you hit apply, you can see it is in progress. It takes just a second or two. And now it is back. So now I have both of these uh, secure columns basically showing yes. So I can see the indicator has changed. Now my unit is secure. However, one little note that it does mention down here, an untrusted certificate, right? So as I mentioned before, if we were to go back to the system security tab, if I check this, nothing should happen, right? Because it's only going to block. Well, actually, that's not true. What's going to happen is you'll see right here once I hit save. The camera that has a certificate on it, it's not blocked, right? Because it slipped by that threshold that we just talked about, but all three of the other ones are primarily because they don't have any certificate in there at all. So let's go back now and take a look at one other thing. Let's go ahead and uncheck this, and we're gonna check this box, and I'm wondering if you know what we're gonna see when we see here. Now, clearly this is not this is gonna be too high of a threshold for my self-signed certificate, right? That's what we're expecting to see. So we go back over here, now you'll note uh, one thing that's slightly confusing, I think, in some people in class when I'm showing this in my certification classes, other than that middle camera there that has just gone offline again, this uh, camera is blocked simply because it, uh, it has a self-signed certificate, which is below the threshold of the button that we just checked here. But the other two cameras right here, and it should have been third if this one had not gone offline, uh, would also, it, that third checkbox doesn't block them because that third checkbox simply says, I don't like untrusted certificates. So if the cameras have no certificate whatsoever, it's not going to block it uh, using that checkbox right there. So I'm gonna go back again, we'll uncheck this, and we'll hit save, and all is well again.